All right, today we're gonna to talk about the exponent laws. Now, here's the thing. In all my years of helping students out with math, this is kind of the area where everyone starts getting a little scared. Don't. They can be a little confusing at first, but if you really understand the principles of how the exponent laws work, you're never gonna to have to memorize them, you're just gonna understand. So we're gonna talk about each of them individually, and we're gonna figure out why they work the way they do. So the first exponent law that we talk about is we talk about the product rule. Now, the product rule is when you're multiplying two exponents or two powers that have common bases. For example, let's say I have five squared multiplied by five to the third. Now, what's happening here? Well, what's happening here is I've got five multiplied by itself twice and five multiplied by itself three times and I'm multiplying those. So if I were to actually expand this, take a look at what happens. This is five times five. This over here is five times five times five. And now I'm just multiplying those guys together. So when you're multiplying, remember, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. I can multiply this five by that one, and then this five by that one, and then that five by this, it doesn't matter. Multiplication, the order is irrelevant. So I can see that I'm just multiplying five fives together. That's the same as five to the fifth power. So if I were to just take and add those two exponents, I end up getting an equivalent expression. Now, the great news about this is regardless of what this number is, it's gonna work every time. If this was a two to the second and a two to the third, I'm still gonna get five twos being multiplied by each other. If I were to change this to an x, the same thing happens. So if this was x squared times x to the third, that's still two x's being multiplied by three x's. That's still x to the fifth. It's the exact same thing regardless. So that's the first law, that's called the power law. The next one is the quotient rule, the quotient law. Now, this one, similar idea, but we're gonna take it to fractions. We're gonna show you how it looks like with fractions. Imagine I had, let's say, three to the fourth divided by three to the third. So what does this look like? This is three times three times three times three divided by three times three times three. Now, when you were taught to, so this is essentially just a fraction. When you were taught to simplify fractions, you were often taught to divide the top and bottom by the greatest common factor. Well, that doesn't really help us in this scenario. I wanna think of it a slightly different way. Imagine, and we're gonna take a little trip back into grade six. Imagine I had the fraction four over 12. And I know you guys can simplify that really, really easy. And you can say, well, that's just one third, no problem. But I'd rather think of it in this way. 4 is equal to 2 times 2, and 12 is equal to 4 times 3, or 2 times 2 times 3. Hopefully you notice that's the prime factorization. When we have a question that's all multiplying and dividing, I can take out common factors. I can divide them out. So I can divide out those 2's and end up with, well, just 1 up here, and then there's that lowly three down at the bottom. I can do the exact same thing here. I can divide out all these common threes and it just leaves me with three or three to the one. So that's how the exponent rule works for product or uh, quotients. All you have to do is subtract the exponents. But a better way to think about it is this way and just say, okay, I'm taking three of those threes from here and I'm dividing them out. That works with x's, it works with anything. If I had x to the fourth divided by x to the third, I would still be dividing out three x's because those x's are just the same number. So that's how the quotient rule works. Now, the power of a power rule, a little bit different. Let's say I have this guy. Let's say I have two to the third to the power of two. What's really happening here? Well, inside this bracket, I could rewrite that as the expanded form of two times two times two. I'm raising that to the power of two, which means that I'm multiplying this by itself. Or in other words, two times two times two multiplied by two times two times two. It's the same thing being multiplied by itself. 
Remember, this is all multiplication. It's exactly the same as the product rule. I now just have six twos being multiplied together. So this is the same as two to the sixth. So when I have a power of a power, I essentially just multiply the two exponents. Done. Now, that works for x's, it works for anything. If that was x to the third to the second power, it's x to the sixth. I still have three x's being multiplied by another three x's. Okay? There are a couple variants to this one. The variants to this one are sometimes you have things with different bases happening. So imagine I had this. Let's say I had 2 to the third multiplied by 3 to the second. I want to keep the powers low. And let's say I was doing that to the second power. So again, let's expand this and see what's going on. This here is 2 multiplied by itself three times. So inside this bracket, I have 2 times 2 times 2. And then I'm multiplying that by 3 squared, which is 3 times 3. I'm squaring this, which means I'm multiplying it by itself. So same thing over here. Remember when multiplying. I can't say this enough. It doesn't matter what order I do it in. I can move these around however I want because everything's being multiplied. So if I were to take these three twos and bring them over here, and take these three, two threes and bring them over here, well now my question looks like this. Two times two times two from here, times two times two times two from here, multiplied by three times three from here, and three times three from there. It's the exact same thing, just in a different order. So how many twos do I have? Well, I got six. How many threes do I have? Well, I got four. So that's two to the sixth multiplied by three to the fourth. So when you have a power of a power, but it's happening to two different bases, well, you're just gonna take and multiply that power by both of those things. So two times three is six, two times two is four. That's great when you have different variables inside of an equation. So if this change to x to the third times y to the fourth, or y, sorry, y to, the, uh, y to the second, and that was squared, well now I'm just gonna multiply that exponent to both and I get x to the sixth, y to the fourth for the exact same reason that it worked with the integers. Okay? The next thing is going to be the power of a quotient. So something like that would be a fraction. Like let's say two over five and that was raised to the power of four. So again, what does this mean? Well, this means I'm taking that fraction and I'm multiplying it by itself four times, just like it would if it were an integer. Don't let the fractions frighten you. So this is gonna be two over five times two over five times two over five times two over five. Remember when we multiply fractions? Tops times tops, bottoms times bottoms, two times two times two times two, that means there are four twos on the top over four fours on the bottom, or four fives on the bottom. So in other words, this exponent gets applied to both. That works if these have exponents on them as well. If this was two squared over five to the third, I would just multiply those to get two to the eighth over five to the twelfth. Nothing to it. Again, works with variables. If that were an x and that were a y, nothing changes. You're still just gonna multiply those in. Okay? The last thing we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about negative exponents. Now negative exponents can be a little frightening at first, but if you kind of see what's going on with the pattern of exponents and how they work, it makes life a little easier. So I'm going to start with positive exponents because we've been dealing with positive exponents for a while. We know how they work. So I'm going to take 2 and let's do 2 to the, let's do 2 to the third to start with. What is two to the third? It's two times two times two. That's eight. And then we're just gonna decrease the power by one. And what's gonna happen is hopefully we'll be able to see a pattern when we keep decreasing these into negatives. See what happens. So two times two is four. And then we get to two to the one. Well, two to the one is just two. Okay, so we're all pretty comfortable with that, I'm hoping. What I want you to notice here is that as I decrease in power, 
I'm essentially multiplying by one less two each time. So that's the same as dividing out a power of two. So I could say that two squared is two to the third divided by two. So eight divided by two is four. I can do the same thing when I drop down to two to the one. Four divided by two is two. So if I then go to two to the zero, well that's just gonna be two divided by two, which is one. Interestingly enough, that's why every single uh, base raised to the power of zero is equal to one. You're essentially taking itself and dividing it by a factor of itself. So you get one every time. So now we're gonna extend this into the negatives and see what happens. So two to the negative one, what happens there? Just like before, each of these I divided by a power of two. So when I divide this by a power of two, I get, or by a factor of two, sorry, I get one over two. I do the same thing, I keep going, I get two to the negative two, and I divide one half by a factor of two, and I get one half divided by two, which is one fourth. So hopefully we can see a pattern here. The pattern is, well, positive exponents are numbers larger than one, Negative exponents are numbers between zero and one, they're fractions. So another thing I want you to notice is two to the negative one and two to the positive one, two to the negative two, two to the positive two. So without even looking, what do you think two to the negative three is? Well, I bet you it's one over eight. And again, for the same reason the pattern happens here, it's gonna happen here as well. So that's why you're often going to be told that a negative exponent takes the reciprocal of a number. It flips it over. Not the best way to think about it at all times, but it is true. So all I need to think about is if I have 2 to the, let's say, negative 7, well that's going to be exactly the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 7. For the exact same reason this pattern happens here. So. What can we do with that? Well, let's say I have x to the negative eight. That's gonna be exactly the same. That's gonna be one over x to the eighth because that's just a number. It's gonna be the reciprocal or the inverse of that, okay? Now, when this becomes a fraction, things get a little weirder, but no big deal. Check this out. Let's say I had, oh, let's say I had the fraction uh, 2 over 7. And let's say I was raising that to the negative 2. Yeah? So what I'm going to do with this is the exact same thing I did with the integers. I'm just going to say that this would be equal to the same thing as 1 over 2 to the 7th to the positive 2. Okay? No problem. So 2 to the 7th to the positive 2, if we want to expand it, we could, it doesn't really matter. That's 4 over 49, no big deal. Um, what I'm going to do is I want you to recognize this here is just dividing fractions. This is a fraction inside of a fraction. So this is saying 1 divided by 4 over 49, or 2 7 squared. So what does that mean? 1 divided by 4 over 49 or 2 7 squared, is when I'm dividing fractions, I just multiply by the reciprocal. So this is 1 multiplied by 49 over 4. So look at how that relates to this. All it does is it says, this flips over again. So just like we took the reciprocal of an integer, like 8 to the negative 2, well that's the same as 8 over 1, so we flipped it over to 1 over 8. This does the exact same thing. It just flips the entire fraction over when you take a negative exponent. So, that works for variables as well. The way I like to think of it is top floor, bottom floor. If you have a fraction and you're dealing with negative exponents, well, it just flips where it is in the fraction. If I have like x to the negative 2, y cubed over z to the negative 2, something like that. Well, this is just the reciprocal of that. 
So if I have a negative exponent, I'm going to take this guy and send him down to the bottom of the fraction. And then I'm going to take this one, because it's in the bottom of the fraction, and send it up to the top, just like the fraction we just did. We flipped the fraction over and made it positive. Same thing, not a big deal at all. So, if we remember our principles of math, if we remember what powers actually do, we can actually never have to memorize product rules or quotient rules or power of a power rules at all because we understand what the exponents are doing. So if you're ever stuck, if you're ever not sure, you forget your rules, go back to basics. Say to yourself, well, if I expanded this, what would it look like? And then you'll never get stuck. Hope that helped a little bit. We'll talk next time.